So let's thank the Father for bringing us here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the time of worship we're about to have. Thank you for your goodness in our lives and your faithfulness. Thank you for all the ways your word will come to us tonight. Thank you because we know that our spirits are receptive and we can hear and see you clearly. In Jesus' name. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for that beautiful session of worship. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you because tonight again we'll be challenged, we'll be edified, and we'll be thoroughly furnished and equipped unto every good work. Thank you for your anointing this present, for teaching and for learning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Welcome to church. Welcome to Global Teaching Service for this evening. God bless you. All right, so um, last week we ended by talking about the purpose of redemption is dominion. Glory to Jesus. So now, I, I want to just quickly um, pick up from where we stopped last week, all right, and try to extrapolate a bit on that before we go into another meaty part of our conversation. Amen. So I said last week that, um, let's read again, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 and 10. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood, out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation, and hast made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Praise God forevermore. So you see that redemption came to make us priests and kings unto our God. Are you getting the point here? So we are kings, and we are priests. We are priests in the sense that we can take up um, matters pertaining to humanity to God by the exercise of our priesthood and we are kings because we can now establish with authority that which we receive in heaven this is why Jesus would lead us in Matthew chapter 6 when he was talking about what we now refer to as the Lord's prayer to pray and say thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven kingship is that ability to bring the will of God to bear upon the head as it is in heaven now in Furthering this conversation, what we need to quickly establish is that, you see, we're talking about redemption, and we say that, we, we say that um, Christ has redeemed us, all right, by his blood. Now, the question will be, what did he redeem us from? And the answer quickly will be that he redeemed us from sin. Now, there are those who will say that we have been redeemed from the course of the law, and I might agree. Just the only issue is that we were never under the law. Because we are Gentile people. It was the, it was the Israelites that, was, that were redeemed from the curse of the law. Because they were the ones that were actually under the law. Do you get the point here? We were redeemed from the sin of Adam. It was Adam that sinned. And the Bible says by one man, sin passed unto all of us. Glory to Jesus. And so if God redeemed us from sin, it follows that he must also have redeemed us from the consequences of sin. Now, when you read the narrative in, um, in um, Genesis chapter 1, 2, and 3, particularly chapter 3, at the fall, many people say that God cursed Adam. Well, you can say that. But if you look at it very deeply, you realize that God actually did not curse Adam. All of those proclamations, there was never any that was proclaimed over Adam. Rather, it was proclaimed over the creation that Adam had dominion over. And when I look at it over and over again, I even realized that even creation was not cursed. In a sense, what was happening that was that God was telling Adam the consequence of what he has done. 
For me, it seems to me as though it was God reading the news. Do you get the point here? Let me, let me use a, a touchy example. Now, if a teenage girl has been consistently advised to shun immorality and she refuses and then she gets pregnant, I mean, we know that that pregnancy is going to disrupt her life, right? She may not be able to go to school again, at least for that one year, and things are just going to happen that will disrupt her life. So when we begin to tell her, ah, you are now pregnant, uh, and sorry, you can't go to school, are we cursing her? We're only telling her the consequence of an action. So if you read, if you read Genesis chapter 3, what you would see clearly is God telling Adam that this thing that you have done, this is what is going to come out of it. But if you, if you are more convenient and comfortable calling it a cost, there's no problem. We're not arguing. Are you getting the point here? But we're saying that, you see, everything that humanity began to suffer from, all right, was as a result of the fall of Adam. Did you get the point here? Everything, listen, every dysfunction that you might think of in this realm is a consequence of the fall of Adam. And really, let me, let me tell you what's happening. One day, many years ago, like five years ago, I was meditating. And I was asking the Lord a very serious question. Can I advise you? Ask God questions. He's not intimidated by and with your questions. Did you get that? So I was asking God questions. I was saying, Lord, what's happening? And what I was asking God was, it seems as though humanity is advancing in technology. We're advancing in our intellectual prowess. But it seems as though the more we advance in technological breakout, the more senseless we become. It seems as though the more advanced... Now, imagine we're the one that made the aeroplane to suspend the law of aer aerodynamics. Because that's what we did. We suspended the law of gravity by intellectual... Um, by our intellectual prowess. Do you get the point here? Suspended gravity. The law was that anything that goes up must come down. Then we introduced another law called aer aerodynamics. And now people can actually be suspended for hours flying. Do you get the point? We suspended the law of um, the law that says that if you jump inside water, you will sink. Glory to God. And then we develop what is called the principle of flotation. Did you get the point? That means that we have actually grown in our intellectual capacity as humans. But it seems like the more our intellectual capacity grows as women, the more the moral fabric of society get destroyed. How many of you have thought about it? Hallelujah. Do you get the point? And you begin to have all manner of rights. Glory to Jesus. And then even pastors are now trying to be politically correct. Amen. Listen, we must understand that God loves everybody, right? So wherever you are, God loves you. But it does not mean that his standards are reduced because he loves us. Do you get the point here? So we love you enough to tell you the truth. Are you getting the point here? And if you, if you want to come amongst us, we welcome you, but we'll say the truth. So one day I was reading the news as an undergraduate. And there was a news from, I think it was South Korea or China. I think it was South Korea. And it was hailed as an, a strong humanitarian gesture. And guess what they were doing? <laughs> so ladies were going to go to a strip club and strip naked. And men are going to come and play with them and give money. And that money was supposed to now be given for charity purposes. Now, someone will say, ah, but the hand just, they're doing it for charity. It was that, that so that thing came to me. I'm like, Lord, what, what's happening here? And then the answer the Lord gave to me, and this is very important for what I want to share now, is that humanity, right, is still growing in the nature of Adam. You see, that Adamic nature that came on account of the fall is still growing in humanity. The only thing that stems the tide of that growth is the life of Christ that we receive at new birth. Now, if you think about it, if you think about it, you realize that sometimes when you catch yourself in your elements, you'll be surprised at the tendencies of your own heart. How many of you have caught yourself before? Come on, do I have believers in the house? Have you caught yourself thinking about something and you're like, am I really the one that is thinking about this? Now, what brings you into that check 
is that the Holy Spirit now lives on your inside and can check your Adamic tendencies. But the man without Christ is still growing in the life of Adam because there are actually good things in the Adamic nature. How many of you know there are good things in the Adamic nature? <laughs> Praise God forevermore. Well, technology and its advancement is one of the good in Adam because Adam had sense. He had intellectual capacity. But it's not only the good things that will grow, the bad things will grow too. Because actually, the tree that we partook of is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it was that tree that sowed death into man. Are you following the point here? And when death came into man, it came with consequences. Are you getting the point here? These consequences are, is what brought about poverty, what brought about sickness, what brought about, what else can we mention? War in the world, lack of peace in the world, and all of these things are consequences of the fall of Adam. So if Christ has come to redeem us from sin, to redeem us from sin, then in most of necessity, I've also redeemed us from the consequences of the fall. Did you get that? Are you following me tonight? So that means that the believer is not designed to be poor. That means that the believer is not designed to be sickly. That means that the believer is not designed to struggle with morality. Because all of this came as a consequence of the fall. One of the things you also quickly notice is that when God created Adam, Romans 1 verse 28, the mandate and the proclamation of God over Adam was that he was going to have dominion. Are you getting the point? And when he fell, dominion was lost. So when we, be, we came back via redemption, dominion is restored. Did you get that? That's why when he says that we have been redeemed by his blood, then the next thing he tells us is that we have now become kings and priests unto our God and we reign on earth. This means that by virtue of the new birth, nothing should keep the believer under subjugation. Nothing. Hallelujah. Not any habit, not the systems of this world, not any demon. What, there's nothing that should keep you under subjugation. Nothing. Hallelujah. Did you get the point here? Nothing. You are not at the mercy of anything because you are a king and you are a priest unto God and you reign on earth. Romans chapter 5, those who have received the free gift of righteousness shall reign in life. We have received the gift of righteousness and as such we reign in life. Glory to Jesus. Say I reign in life. I reign in life. I reign in life. I reign in life. Glory to Jesus. There's no facet and aspect of your life that you are supposed to be subjugated. No. You're not supposed to, if you're a student, you're not supposed to struggle academically. If you're a graduate, you're not supposed to struggle to get a job if that's your desire. You're not supposed to struggle to feed. Matthew 6 tells us that he even feeds the birds of the sky. He closed the lily of the valley. How much more you who are named after him. That's why scripture says that we are not ashamed of the devices of the devil. Lest it takes advantage of us. Many of the things that happens in the life of the believers are the devices and manipulation of Satan trying to keep us down. But not anymore. Hallelujah. Say because I've been redeemed. Say like you mean. Say because I've been redeemed. I have dominion. Yeah. Redemption brought dominion. Redemption brought dominion. Hallelujah. Redemption brought dominion. Because we have been redeemed, we now have what? Dominion. Glory to Jesus. Say so we have dominion on account of redemption. I have dominion on account of redemption. We have been redeemed. Hallelujah. So I said that remember that it was sin that took away dominion. Therefore, if sin has, been dealt, has now been dealt with in redemption, then dominion is restored. Hallelujah. Did you get that? It was sin that brought, that took away dominion. And if sin has now been dealt with in redemption, then dominion is restored. I want us to raise a generation of Christians beginning from here and now. 
everyone seated in this service and everyone watching online that refuse to take no for an answer. I want us to raise, I want us to be that generation of Christians that consistently gives Satan a technical knockout. That in every area of our life, we refuse to see the works of Satan. Hallelujah. We refuse it. We reject it. We reject it. So I was scrolling through Facebook um, a few days ago. And someone wrote a post and said that cancer is a bully. And so a lot of people began to respond to that post. Oh, this one says, I lost this person to cancer. I want to say, I lost this person to cancer. And they were just talking, talking about, oh, cancer is indeed a bully. And immediately I just felt an irritation in my heart. Now, 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 if you're watching this service and you've lost someone, we, 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 we are empathetic, we sympathize with you, um, we're not judging you, glory to Jesus, we're, we're, not, we're not in any way, um, we're not in any way talking down your loss. Are you getting my point here? But I became infuriated because um, that post and the, the comments talked about cancer as though it was, it had a final C. Are you getting the point here? We've seen cancer, heal, cancers healed in their numbers. Glory to Jesus. The power of God heals cancer. Are you getting the point here? Some people call it the big C. They don't even want to mention the name again. They are so scared. They call it. If you're watching this broadcast wherever you are and there's any diagnosis of any cancerous growth in your body, right now I take it away from you in the name of Jesus. We are not at the mercy of anything. Hallelujah. If it is HIV, we heal that one too. Are you getting the point? If it is hepatitis, we heal it too. I don't know what the name is called. We heal it too. I didn't get the opportunity to heal anybody of COVID. I'm, I'm not, I don't have to lie. I didn't get the opportunity. But some of my young men did. Praise God forevermore. Some of my young men are, some comments are, Pastor, there's this thing. I say, lay hands on it. We, we saw a confirmed case of COVID-19 healed. And I, I remember those days. I will refuse deliberately to wear a nose mask. Because the Bible, not the Bible now, we read about John G. Lake. We, when there was a flu outbreak, say, put it on my hands. And they check it through the, through the um, what do you guys call it now? The microscope. And as the flu lands on his hand, it dies off immediately. Because the power of God and the life of God swallows up death. I might as well put this to work. Are you getting the point here? You are not at the mercy of any diagnosis. Hallelujah. You have dominion over it. You are not at the mercy of poverty. You have dominion over it. You are not at the mercy of a deadline because nothing dies in your hands. All you have is lifelines. Hallelujah. There is a kelebaranda kabaya. Nothing keeps us down. Say nothing keeps me down. Nothing. Keep, wherever you're connected from, say nothing keeps me down. Nothing keeps me down. Hallelujah. So I'm saying our family, they marry late. One marriage in itself is not an achievement. If you desire healthy marriage, you can have it. Are you getting the point here? There is nothing, the Bible says, whatsoever you desire when you pray. It says, believe that you would have it and then you will receive it. This is the dominion of kings. I'm talking to you about the dominion of kings. There is nothing that has the power in itself to keep you down. Except you permit it. And by God, we are not giving any permission to the devil in your life any longer. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what it's called. I don't care what that challenge is called. By the virtue of redemption, your dominion is restored. Say me in my life, I don't know what used to happen. No. I just used to do things late, 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 late. I don't do things early. Not anymore. 
The spirit of God is on your legs. Glory to God. And the times that have been lost, I declare that God compresses it on your behalf. Now in the name of Jesus. Jesus is Lord over time. Oh, and I declare that time and chance begins to work in your favor. In the name of Jesus. What am I preaching to tonight? Time and chance begins to work in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever has been lost is restored. I feel like prophecy tonight. Whatever has been lost is restored. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has been lost is restored. In the name of Jesus. I don't care what it is. I don't care for how long it has been. Reketo viranda ciclo rabates ke brigadino vila brata nastakaya. Reketo skovriga dila. In the next one we come back with your own testimony. In the name of Jesus. Come back with your own testimony. In the name of Jesus. If we have been redeemed, then we have dominion. Don't forget that. If we have been redeemed, then we have dominion. For in him we have redemption, which is the forgiveness of sins in his blood. And this forgiveness of sins has brought us into the dominion of kings. And as a king and priest unto our God, we reign on earth. Hallelujah. We've been blessed tonight. Glory to Jesus. If you want to be part of what we're doing, there'll be an account details on the screen right now. You can give. God bless you. I'll see you again next week Sunday. Amen.